All right, what's going on, guys? Today, we just got the next big update for Armored Core 6, and this is the first major content drop since the game came out, the PvP ranked matchmaking update. And while it is primarily PvP oriented, even if you're someone that's not into PvP, there's still a reason to jump back in. This update added new weapons, a new frame, several new multiplayer maps, ranked PvP matchmaking, a leaderboard, and custom nameplates. Now, I've been having a lot of fun with this update ever since it dropped this morning, so today we're going to do a full guide to everything that's new, what all changed with today's patch, how to rank up in multiplayer, what you get for doing so, and the most important question, is it fun? So as we get started today, if you want to stay up to date on all things from software, Armored Core, Elden Ring, and Souls Likes, and enjoy the lore and discussion around these games, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and now let's get into it. After installing the new update and loading up the game, you'll be greeted with a message saying new parts are available in the shop, if you've already beaten the game at least once. This first new part is the WR0555 Attaché Heavy Machine Gun. This fills a niche in between assault rifles and miniguns, dealing 62 damage per shot as well as 62 impact, with 40 rounds in the mag and 920 total. This weapon definitely isn't bad, it is very slow firing, but personally I think I'd rather run a minigun, since I don't think it packs enough of a punch but again it does fill that niche so if you are looking for something in the in-between it can work for you i think this gun works best in long story missions next up is the pfau 66d handheld pulse missile launcher this gun fires three rounds off dealing 178 damage per shot and 122 impact damage with 228 total rounds now you can see it fires these three missiles in a sort of arc tracking the target and doing little pulse explosions now you can charge it up for rapid fire and when you do that it'll shoot them in a straight line but the main purpose of this weapon is to negate pulse shields and i like it quite a bit we then have the ve60 lcb laser cannon and this thing is a powerhouse it clocks in a whopping 1201 damage per shot with 650 impact but only 32 rounds total if you manage to land a shot with this thing it will pack a punch but that's a pretty big if the cooldown after a charge shot is very long but there is a lot of utility in the single fire it still hits hard but you do only have 32 shots it's going to be interesting to see where this shines. But the main weapon a lot of people were looking forward to is the shoulder mounted Gatling Cannon Shao Wei. This thing's putting out 24 damage per round and 20 impact with a total capacity of 800. However, you can't fire for very long without having to cool down. And although it is a fairly quick cooldown, this prevents spamming. So if you fire it without having your reticle on target, you're going to have to cool down before you actually get it online. So this weapon is good, it is useful, but you can't just turn your brain off and fire. And that's kind of the theme for all of these weapons. They play their roles fairly well, but none of them are really overpowered, and I think that's exactly how it should be. I like these weapons. But moving on to the new Lammergeier frame. This is a lightweight quad leg build that focuses on aerial nimbleness. I like this one quite a bit. It's fast, it's floaty, but still able to get out of the way of oncoming fire, which you are going to have to do quite a bit because it doesn't have a lot of defense. And just like the weapons, it has its own niche to fill. If you're looking to stay up in the air, firing some ranged weapons, likely a lot of missiles, that's where the Lammergeier comes in. I think a lot of people are going to really like this one. Now the frame is really expensive so I hope you have a lot of money saved up but trust me it is worth it. But now let's talk about the main feature of this new update. Ranked matchmaking multiplayer. When you load into the nest now you're going to notice that a lot of things are different. Namely this new currency in the top right called nest points which you will earn from completing ranked matches. And one of the things you can spend these on are custom nameplates. There's a lot of cool ones here with different effects, ornamentations, and even the designs of the mini corporations they're pretty cool and just that extra level of customization that everybody likes but you will earn various nameplates for ranking up which honestly are more of a flex but when you load into ranked play you'll have the option of 1v1s or 3v3s now i opted in to play quite a bit of 1v1s i have not tried 3v3s yet although i'm probably going to for a reason i'll explain in a bit but thankfully now you have matchmaking which means you don't have to search out a server to play in you'll automatically be matched up of somebody with an equal rank now when you complete an online match regardless of winning or losing you will be rewarded with nest points and that's the loop that you play trying to climb that rank ladder going from unranked to rank d rank c rank b rank a all the way up to rank s and even though you are compensated even when you lose a match your goal is always to win and you can see here after i won i received 50 nest points and 200 rank points as well as a special nameplate for winning my first match now if you're someone that manages to climb all the way to s rank you will have the opportunity to be featured on the leader 
leaderboard, which showcases the top 100 players in the world. Now, at the time of me making this video, I don't think there's anybody that's S rank yet, but it is going to be very tough to get there. And here's where I'm going to talk about my experience playing ranked matches so far. When it comes to skill level, I'm a very average player. I've only played a handful of multiplayer matches up until this point, and I don't know all the optimal strategies to win. But even I can realize that this game is not very balanced. There are still a handful of strategies that are near impossible to win against, such as the Bumblebee build which you may have heard of, which can put you into an infinite stagger loop as well as heavy tank builds, which are for some reason still just as fast as every other frame. I'm not saying it's impossible to be creative, but you do need to be aware of what the meta is, because the people that want to reach the top don't care about what's fair or not. That's not to say you can't have fun. Even me as an average player still had a good time and won the majority of the matches I played this morning. Granted, those were all at low ranks, so if you want to get to the top, practice, learn what's good and what isn't, and then put your own spin on it. But remember, ranked play is a mountain, so be prepared to climb it. Now the ranks are going to work in a seasonal schedule, and it was revealed today that the first reset will happen on February 29th, 2024, so be prepared for that. Now let's take a quick look at the overview of some of the balance changes that happened today. Assault rifles and machine guns got a general buff, with reduced sway and recoil for assault rifles, and increased range for machine guns. A few bazookas got an AoE nerf, however I was playing today, and it really doesn't seem like it. Those things still hit like a truck even if they miss you. We did have some specifics a laser rifle nerf, plasma rifle nerf, coral shield nerf, split missile launcher buffs, cluster missile launcher buff, but the plasma missile launcher got nerfed. Now for some frame changes, the Melander arms got a recoil buff, the mind alpha legs got lighter, the tetrapod VP legs got a speed increase, but both tetrapod legs got a decreased acceleration, the Fortaleza tank got a pretty substantial nerf, thankfully, and the Buerzel booster got a nerf as well. So quite a lot of changes right there, some pretty good ones, but I still think the game is far from being perfect. Perfect. There's still way too many outliers, but we'll see if FromSoftware continues to adjust this game. If they are going on a seasonal model now, I think they're going to, so we'll just have to wait and see. But that is everything you need to know about the new 1.05 ranked matchmaking multiplayer update. Lots of really cool things in this one, and honestly, a much bigger content update than I thought they would do. I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say down in the comment section below though. Have you been playing it lately? And what are your thoughts about it? And also let me know what build you're taking into the ranked play, and if anybody has achieved S rank yet, I would like to know that as well. Anyways though guys, that is going to pretty much do it for the video today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it, and subscribe if you're new around here. Check out all the links down in the description below, but with all that, I will catch you in the next one.